I'm Luke Melke, helping you master the art of filmmaking. Today we're talking about <laughs> sensor size. Which one should you get? Most people out there kind of just assume that they should buy the bigger one because that's what the internet says they should do, but they don't really understand why. And very few people have the ability to test several different sensor sizes to see which one's best for them. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out and test four different sensor sizes. A full frame, a 35 millimeter frame, a ASPC, and a micro four thirds. And we're gonna see how these different sensors compare with the same lenses. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are with the actual shots. The top left is the full frame. The top right is the 35 millimeter. The bottom left is the APS-C and the bottom right is the Micro Four Thirds sensors. They all have the same lens uh, with each of these shots here. They obviously look a lot different. And the reason is because the different type of lens or the different type of sensor size and the crop factors that are integrated with those. In all these shots, we have about 25 to 30 feet distance from the camera to the subject, all shot in the same tripod, sub subject in the same spot. I do want to make a quick shout out here to the subject, a friend of mine, Isaiah Kazarovich, uh, an upcoming filmmaker. Uh, thank you for spending your time and standing there in the freezing cold. I'm going to pause it here quick because you've probably noticed on this shot and the previous lens that the full frame has this weird like black circle, this one like a black box around it. The reason is the lenses we are using are, were not designed for full frame sensors. So you wanna make sure if you have a full frame camera that you buy a lens that is also gonna work as a full frame. Different brands are gonna label them different on which ones are which, so I'm not gonna just tell you which is a full frame lens and which is not. But you should be able to find in the description when you're purchasing your lens which uh, lens you should be purchasing. Usually the full frame ones are going to cost a little bit more. Not always, but that's kind of the, the general rule of thumb is that's kind of how it works. Uh, but here you also notice in the bottom left on all but the GH4, you can actually see the bags. Uh, this I thought was kind of interesting is because the bags were actually slightly behind the camera. And with this lens, we're actually seeing what was behind the camera, which I thought was kind of weird, but kind of cool as well. Then you'll notice on this the eight millimeter, you're really starting to get a lot of distortion here. It's not as noticeable now as when we go to the next one where we get up close shots, but it is still pretty noticeable, especially on the pillars of the buildings. All right, now we moved up to up close shots. These are all medium close up slash close up shots. So you can see the difference between how they knock out the background and how it warps the perspective of the subject with these. This is where the full frame is going to become much more noticeable, the warping and the distortion of the lens than on the micro four thirds. Because we have to move further back the micro four thirds, we get less distortion. The 35 looks pretty natural on the micro four thirds. It's starting to look a little bit off on the full frame sensor. And here's where we really start noticing the difference here with the 16 millimeter. We really start getting a lot of distortion with the full frame sensor here. And this is where I also start noticing that objects in the background almost start to feel like they're moving um, in the background. It's not the background, obviously, it's not moving. We're not picking up these trees and moving them. But you'll notice on the full frame sensor, the tree in the background is decently close to Isaiah's head. And on the other ones, it's so far away that it's hardly in the frame where it's out of the frame completely. Uh, the reason for that is as we move the camera further back, we're able to see more space and more stuff behind their head. And it has that almost artificial zoomed in because we have to step further back, which means it's we're seeing stuff more around his head and it's kind of moving the background out. And here is where we really start noticing some of the warp distortion with the GH4. It's not so bad, but with a full frame, it is definitely causing some issues because we're like six inches away from his face on this one. And on the Micro Four Thirds GH4, we're between a foot and a half and two feet away, which doesn't have nearly as much warp. So you'll see how Isaiah's head really starts to uh, warp 
and his nose grows really large on the full frame sensor. You also see here I just wanted to show a quick pan to show how objects warp and move as you're panning because obviously those pillars and those buildings are straight. If they weren't we would not be shooting near it because that would be kind of a hazardous and I kind of like Isaiah so I didn't really want to kill him so you have to also take into account how is it going to warp perspective as you move through your world. Is it going to cause problems with say buildings not looking straight or other objects? Is it going to make them not look real? Okay so now you might be wondering why do these sensors look different with the same lens? Here I'll explain why. With Take a lens here and how a lens works is the light comes in this side with the image it goes inside the lens, it flips upside down, it comes out as an upside down image. Good thing the cameras don't keep it upside down, otherwise that would get really nauseous really fast. And the image comes out here. Let's say, just for examples here so it's easier to see, the image comes out this big once the lens throws it. So the image comes in and it throws the image out to here. Let's say it's this big. On a full frame, it's this big. So it sees the whole image that the lens is sending out to the section right here. But a micro four thirds is only this big. So instead of seeing the whole image that's being cast in the sensor space, the sensor is only this big, so it's only seeing that small section of the image, which makes it appear that it's being zoomed in when it's actually more like, kind of more like a crop inside of it. That's why I call it a crop factor. So it's a smaller section of the image that's being cast. So that's the basics of why they work the way they do. So having a 85 millimeter lens here on a full frame, I'm seeing the image this big on a micro four thirds, it's this big. So I'll, it looks like I'm zoomed in. So here are a few takeaways I got from today's experiment. The first one is there's kind of a theory going out there that a larger sensor size is gonna have a shallower depth of field. It's gonna feel more cinematic because your shallow depth of field. And yet this is not technically true, but it's kind of is true. And I'll explain what I mean by that. It doesn't have a shallower depth of field, but as we noticed, in order to make the image frame the same size, we had to bring the lens in closer to make the subject look like it's the same size. Well, what happens when you bring a subject in closer? You have to focus in closer as well. So you turn your wheel, you're focusing closer, which makes the background over here more out of focus. So that's what makes it appear that's a shallower depth of field when technically it's not actually a shallow depth of field with a full frame. Another thing I noticed with this test was not all the lenses focused as well on each of the cameras. For instance, the 85 millimeter here did not want to focus well with the 60 in the full frame. And this maybe this is something to do with user error or because we have lenses that aren't officially Canon lenses. Um, but it focused just fine on all the other cameras. This is actually my favorite lens to use on this camera I'm using here. This is the C200 or my GH4, but it didn't work very well on the 60. On the other hand, the 35 millimeter lens focused pretty well on all the cameras except for the GH4. It didn't focus as well on that. I, I couldn't get it to nail that focus. It might be something to do because they're not official Canon lenses or in the Panasonic's case had to use an adapter to get the lens to work. So that might be part of it there. But that was something I did think interesting and something to think about when getting off-brand lenses and potentially with different sensor sizes. Another pretty obvious takeaway is not all of the lenses work on full frame sensors. So you need to make sure you're looking and getting the right lens with your camera. Your typical kit lens that comes with a micro four thirds or ASPC camera, that's probably not gonna work on a full frame. So if you move up to a full frame, a lot of your lenses probably won't carry over. So you need to think about that. It's not just the expense of a new camera, it's also the expense of, are my lenses gonna work? So make sure you research, are your lenses gonna work with your new camera because otherwise that can become a very very expensive upgrade to have to replace all of your lenses. I created a quick cheat sheet so to speak with all the different lenses and how they work with the different sensors all comparison just like I showed in the video I have all freeze frames if each of those so you can see this sensor with this lens looks about like this at 25 to 30 feet. So you can kind of get an idea what lens will I need with my camera to line up an image a certain way. How will you frame it up? Well, if I have a micro four thirds, 
my subject is approximately this far away, it'll hopefully help you understand which lens you need to put in your camera to frame that up properly. So you can pack a little bit lighter, you can pack just the equipment you need instead of have to pack everything. You can come in with a pretty good idea of what you need and be a little bit more efficient on set. If you liked this video, please comment, like, subscribe, share. And don't forget, in the description below, I'm going to have a link to my website where you can download the free files with the quick cheat sheets of which lenses look like what on different sensors. We can, we can, we can cut now. Wait, I'm the editor. I can cut one. Just cut.